Hello and uh, welcome to Tries at Sea. I'm Mickey Hansen. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about the uh, Lusitania, uh, the grandest um, liner of her day. Um, thrice winner of the uh, Blue Ribbon, the um, ribbon given to the world's fastest uh, ship. Her top speed was uh, 24 knots. Uh, she was launched uh, June 6, 19 1906. Uh, the first uh, three super liners built for the uh, Cunard line. Um, her story um, um, begins um, with the um, with um, J. P. Morgan, the well-known um, millionaire, um, millionaire tycoon, uh, buying up various uh, shipping lines, which would be named the International Merchant Marine. Um, one by one, um, uh, transit lines were being brought, uh, bought up. By the time um, it was over, there were only two uh, shipping lines left that were privately owned. The Cunard line just happened to be one of them. But the uh, British government uh, was afraid that the uh, uh, Cunard line would follow suit. Uh, to keep this from happening, the uh, British government offered a loan to, uh, to the, the Cunard line to build uh, two, uh, two ships on the condition they remain British for at least 20 years and that they be well built, built in such a way that they could be easily converted for war purposes. Thus, the Lusitania and the Maritania were born. Uh, the Maritania would fall suit a couple of years later and would be considerably faster than, the, uh, than Lucy, the, uh, what ship brought slide to um, call her. One person described the Lusitania as the uh, most beautiful um, ship, um, beautif more beautiful than um, Solomon's Temple, and large enough to um, hold off his, uh, his um, wives. If you have any questions about the Lusitania or any other ships um, that I've been discussing, the number is 422-3902. Um, when I do a show, I always uh, focus in on a particular ship, but you're free to talk about any ship you'd like to, whether it be the, um, the hit movie you've heard so much about, got the 11 Oscars, or um, the Monitor or whatever. Well, anyway, the uh, Lusitania was um, w um, Nine years after she was launched, she set sail from New York. Uh, by this time, World War I had already broken out, and the, uh, uh, the German uh, Navy was systematically sinking uh, merchant vessels one by one. Um, the strategy that was used by the Germans during both, both World War I and World War II was to literally starve the uh, British into sus submission by by hopeful, um, hopefully ch choking the um, needed supplies to the British, they could get them to surrender. The uh, uh, the British the um, the Brit <laughs> the. Uh, uh, the British were uh, were um, fed up with the uh, uh, 
uh, Germans um, sinking the uh, merchant vessels. So the uh, so in violation of uh, Geneva Convention at that time, they would use supposedly neutral vessels to, to transport um, uh, munitions, whether it be a commercial uh, vessel for the uh, British, or um, maybe they they'd have a they'd have a British ship, but have it fly a neutral fl flag. The uh, the U.S. Um, was the um, was the most common um, flag that they would use. The um, one of the British's favorite techniques was to use what were known as Q ships. These would be designed as merch merchant ve um, merchant vessels. Um, the Germans would follow the protocol at that time. They would uh, surface, give them the time to um, abandon ship, and then they would go ahead and uh, either use de uh, deck guns and torpedo it. But after doing this about a year into the war, it, it became pretty risky. So the decision was made that any ship carrying the British flag would be, would be torpedoed without regard for safety for passengers and crew. About a week before um, the Lusitania, Lusitania set sail for a, la for a last voyage, the, um, the Germans were sinking all kinds of merchant, uh, merchant vessels. Uh, the U-boat was not exactly an ideal um, weapon. It was cramped. It's, the interior really smelled real bad. Um, it was uh, space was at a premium, and its weapons were much better. When the thing um, would fire a torpedo, half the times the thing would misfire. But when, but when it was able to fire the torpedo, <laughs> it it was deadly effective. The uh, the person who invented the U-boat, I forgot his name, had intended it for the uh, American uh, vessels, for for the American Navy. But they thought so um, uh, so inhuman and so um, so um, on warlike. The person instead had to sell for the Germans, the Kaiser, then the uh, the uh, Chancellor of Germany, thought saw the potential of um, of U-boats, and and ordered them in great order. The uh, U-20 was one U-boat that would um, make history. Um, he was under orders to systematically um, sink U-boat, um, not U sink uh, merchant vessels one by one without any regard to whether they were neutral or war. Well, on May 1st, 1915, the Lusitania set sail from New York. It was a grand occasion. When, whenever a ship sets sail from New York, um, from a port, it's always a grand event. People from all, all walks of life, whether rich or poor, would observe the awe of the uh, of, of the of the Lusitania. She was she was a wonderful vessel, 785 feet long, and captained by William Turner a veteran of 30 years for the Cunard line. And the, uh, the, uh, the wealthy passengers were something to look at. Among them were um, Alfred ba Vanderbilt, a, a well-known uh, millionaire tycoon, was, set sa was setting sail for England to attend a meeting of the International um, Horse Breeders Association. And also the um, well-known th uh, theatrical producer Charles Froman, who introduced the play Peter Pan to American audiences. And also, um, uh, along with the uh, wealthy people were, um, were, were the people that weren't so um, wealthy. That America was a disappointment to them, and were, they were eager to return to their native land. But a couple weeks before they set sail, a warning appeared in the uh, New York Times. Any um, 
any uh, any uh, vessel holding the uh, British flag or its um, or its allies would do so at their own risk. Uh, not many people had heard of the uh, warning, and those who had heard of the warning took it with only a grain of salt. Ha! Huh. Lusitania is the um, uh, uh, quickest uh, ve uh, vessel afloat. Uh, nothing will happen. Others were weren't even wa were warned. Well, by ironic twist, this warning had appeared next door to um, a, a Stanley knows that the Lusitania was going to set sail May 1st. After, um, after a series of security measures, the uh, Lusitania uh, uh, set sail. They had earlier um, got, had some rumors that, that the Germ Germans were um, wanting to um, sabotage the Lusitania. And in the bowels of the ship, there were three unknown people that supposedly were going to sabotage the ship, but were thrown in the brig, and, and nothing was heard from it. Well, the, uh, the voyage was relatively uneventful. The U-boat um, the, um, the, the had, um, um, had systematically uh, sunk various merchant vessels. Um, ca uh, captain by uh, Walter Schrieger, who um, was well known in um, the, the German Navy as an efficient captain, would curse and swear about all the, the bad luck he had had, uh, sinking um, all kinds of vessels. Some he had luck with, some, some he hadn't. Now there was some talk that that um, the U-boat uh, captain Schrieger uh, had fell along with other um, uh, officers with the German Navy that the Lusitania was in violation of war, carrying war munitions for the effort. But the only confirmed cargo aboard the um, the Lusitania that was war-related were bullets hidden among barrels of cheese. But there was some talk that they were carrying uh, more, uh, more dangerous cargo, gun cotton, TNT, bombs. But these rumors were never confirmed. Well, anyways, uh, the, the uh, Lusitania was just going past the lighthouse at Old Kin, Old Kin Sail, less than a day sail from um, from safety, and then all of a sudden, Cap, uh, Captain Swigger receives a notice of U-boat activity. Go zigzag course, steer mid channel, maintain top speed. The uh, the uh, Captain, um, Captain Turner took these with a grain of salt. Anyways, he was under orders to uh, cons uh, conserve um, coal, so one of the boilers was shut down, so it was going at a leisurely 20 knots and maintaining a um, fairly straight course. Well, uh, at high noon, just when it looked like, looked like it was going to make it, Captain Schrieger, having no hope of sinking the Lusit Lusitania, decided to go ahead and take a chance and submerge. To Captain Schrieger's shock, the Lusitania made a hard starboard, turning right directly into um, the Lusitania's path. Immediately, Captain Schrieger gives the order to fire one torpedo. You could, um, you could hear that torpedo whisk through the um, through the water, and then, uh, then it hit, right behind the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, behind behind the bridge in this ship, 
and there was a relatively minor explosion. And then a few seconds later, a much, much more powerful explosion could be heard. Then immediately, the Lusitania started to take a nosedive. The people were in such a panic state that there, were, there was some confusion about which lifeboats were, um, they were supposed to go to. Because of the, um, tit of the Titanic disaster three years earlier, there was a requirement there there be, U on, be uh, lifeboats, for, lifeboats for everybody and that um, there'd be training in their use. But aboard the Lusitania, these regulations were not observed. The, uh, the, there was panic all over the place. No one knew which um, lifeboat, no one had instructed them which lifeboat to go to or what the procedures were. They were crambling all over the, uh, uh, the uh, lifeboat, one, wondering, um, wondering what the heck we're supposed to be doing. I, and it just amazes me how they're supposed to know where they're supposed most to go. The Lusitania crew was horribly un, un, untrained for, for this. I think people should, should have learned their lesson from the Titanic. The crew should not have been um, Crews should have been well made, well, should have been trained, but in this case they weren't. And it, it's, it's and, and I just and I just wonder what, whether people learn anything when it comes to on disasters. But on, I think the Lusitania t uh, tells otherwise. Solely but surely, the Lusitania started to go down. And um, not only to the lifeboats, but we're also going to um, tops of the deck, hoping by hope, hoping beyond hope they would be spared. And then finally, slowly but surely, down it went. And then, at the same time it was going down, it started to take a heavier and heavier list to starboard to the ship's right side. And then, after 18 minutes, it was gone. And she had taken 1,200 people with her, including 128 Americans. It was the um, second worst disaster of its time. All, um, again, if you have any questions about the Lusitania or any other ships, please give me a call. 422-3902. Um, I will be focusing, as I said earlier, I'll be focusing on the Lusitania, but this show is about ships in general. Well, anyway, all kinds of people were moaning in the water. One woman in the uh, video, The Last Voyage of the Lusitania, was talking about how it was a half a circle. People were struggling to try to get above the light lifeboats. And on board the ship, most of them hadn't even made it to the deck. When the torpedo struck, the uh, ship's power was completely knocked out. So they were trapped in the elevators, the third class staterooms, the boilers. And then there were, uh, as far as the people that were in the water, they were, they were free. Um, it was 30 degrees. Um, uh, above Fahrenheit, um, if they didn't die of, of drowning, exposure would also uh, would um, would surely do them in. But slowly but surely, the life um, the lifeboats um, uh, made it to safety. Over the um, over the over the weeks, there were attempts to find bodies from the ship. That's went as far as Wales. In all, o over 300 were found out of a complement of 1,200. Alfred Vanderbilt's body was found 
Charles Froman's buy on a minute. It was Charles Froman's buy that was found. Alfred Vanderbilt's on uh, never was. And of the two, uh, over two, 300 bodies that were found, 60 were uh, never identified. Unlike the Titanic, where there were um, horrible discrepancies among, um, among the classes, among the Lusitania, the, the seaplane no favorites. Like among children, only 27% of the children was, survived. Um, if you ever watched the video, Last Voyage of the Lusitania, I, I, I saw a coffin with a baby in it. That, more than anything else, made me sick. It, I mean, these were people um, that were neutral. They didn't have anything to do with the war. And then here they were, senses, uh, sensibly, sensibly killed. And to add insult upon injury, a few years later, Captain Trigger got a, um, um, a medal for his um, six, uh, for, the, for the successful um, um, for, for a successful um, voyage. Um, over the years, there's been a question about what caused the uh, second explosion aboard the Lusitania. The British uh, strongly believe that um, even today that it was not munitions. They vehemently, vehemently denied there were munitions aboard the ship. But right now, I think the evidence speaks otherwise. I mean, when you consider an, an explosion like that, I mean, this wasn't a simple firecracker. I mean, bang! Uh, 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 an explosion that would cause anybody to lose his hearing. And I seriously doubt a second torpedo would cause that much explosion. Uh, yeah, there was some talk there were tor tor two torpedoes fired, one that went behind the uh, bridge and another one that went uh, aft, which destroyed the um, engine, and that's what um, would actually do in the ship. Um, there was a British inquiry um, uh, started that um, promptly blamed, blamed Germany, but um, uh, a record rec uh, historians recovered uh, made by First Lord of the Admiralty, Richard Churchill, as you well know, was Prime Minister during the uh, Second World War, uh, had and actually uh, was some talk that he had deliberately sacrificed the Lusitania to get, get America into the war. But so far, historians have debated um, what caused that second explosion. Um, about 20 years later, Jim Gerard had found the, um, the Lusitania in 30 feet, and, um, 300 feet of water. At that time, he mistakenly thought the ship um, was laying on its port side. Later, divers would, well, excuse me, had laid on, was laying down on its port side, but historians had later determined it was, in fact, laying on its port side. Um, jo uh, John Light in the 1960s had dived on the uh, Lusitania to deter uh, determine exactly what caused the uh, second explosion. And he, he, he got his proof, um, at least what he thought was proof, a gigantic hole in the aft powder ma magazine. This is the magazine that if the ship was carrying any kind of munitions, this is where it would be st stored. And according to him, it was completely total. Um, I get, um, I, um, anyone who's listening to the show uh, maybe have a, has a different opinion about what caused that a second explosion. Or maybe you'd like to know who was at, um, who was at fault. Was it the uh, Germans recklessly firing the, U um, firing the torpedo at any ship it saw? Or was it the British who deliberately sacrificed the Lusitania to get America to the war? I give you an opportunity to um, discuss these issues. The number is 422 3902. 
uh, the uh, Lewis um, the uh, British um, inquiry into uh, the Lusitania um, disaster pro um, conducted by Lord Mersey, who had also um, conducted the famous uh, Titanic, um, famous Titanic disaster, although this one was hardly unbiased. They wasted little time um, blaming um, t um, the, uh, uh, the Germans and completely absolved themselves of any um, blame for the disaster. Um, the Germans, on the other hand, uh, and accused the uh, British uh, uh, of, say, of using the Lusitania as an excuse for getting the American the war. There were 128 Americans that had died on the uh, vessel. And by um, getting those Americans killed, the uh, Brit the British um, had thought Americans would be so angered by, by what the Germans had done. The, th the battle cry was, avenge the Lusitania. And that had been, and, and that had been the theme for the entire, and that had been the, th um, the theme throughout the rest of, the, uh, rest of World War I, uh, then called the, uh, the Great War. The, uh, the, uh, the um, um, this is a controversy that lingers to this day. Who was at fault, the British or, or the uh, Germans? Um, no no an oceanographer, oceanographer, Bob Ballard, had wanted to put this controversy permanently to rest. So he sent um, with the, um, had sent down three robot, underwater robots and one submersible to explore the Lusitania and confirm John Light's theory about, about, the, um, about the, um, the munitions. Um, well, he had um, sent the robot uh, down to, um, sent, sent Jason to examine the, um, the, the, uh, ho the hole. But to, uh, to, to everybody's shot, the hull was well, at, um, well forward of the uh, powder magazine. So if, so if there were explosives aboard the ship, it was not what caused the disaster. So the uh, theory that had been around for 80 years was suddenly blown to pieces. And no one was any closer to knowing what caused the uh, disaster than, the, than before. But Bob Ballard, not to be deterred, was, deter uh, was determined to find out what what had happened. So he um, so he sent, so he um, so he uh, went down the uh, delta to follow the trail the Lusitania took on its uh, dive down. Sure enough, there was a long trail of coal um, leading up to the ship. My understanding is, when um, when, you, when you get towards the end of the end of the voyage, the coal was almost depleted, except for this thin layer of coal. There was this gas that was built up among the coal. So when the torpedo struck the Lusitania, the coal dust was thrown up. That coal dust was ignited, and then that's what caused the second explosion. But. Uh, to this day, historians cannot agree 100% what caused that second explosion. Um, for those who want my personal opinion, I support Bob Ballard's theory. For starters, I don't see how you can ignite explosives and yet not have them explode. It just makes me sick. Um, all these people who sensibly died because of one torpedo. I mean, one thing you should keep in mind about the Lusitania, this was no weak vessel. It had many, many more compartments than the Titanic. And unlike the Titanic had an iceberg cutting a, a large um, gas into the starboard side of the ship, it was one single torpedo 
one single torpedo, and the ship was gone in 18 minutes. To this day, historians cannot agree on why that is. Um, again, I give you an opportunity to call 422-9, excuse me, 422-3902. Um, if you have your own theory about what caused the, um, ca uh, caused the uh, Lusitania disaster, uh, well, whether the Germans were at fault or whether it was the British, well, what, 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 what caused that second explosion? And to, uh, to me, I think there was plenty of blame to go around. Captain Turner had been specifically told to go a zigzag course and go top speed. He failed to do so. And Captain Turner, and, and, and Captain Turner uh, knew, uh, knew uh, best of my knowledge, knew perfectly well that the, uh, the Lusitania was, suppo was supposed to be a neutral vessel. Although I'm confident he didn't, he didn't believe it for a minute. So when he saw that, saw the Lusitania, he was convinced that it was not a neutral vessel. So he went ahead and torpedoed it. And it wasn't um, just Americans. There were people all over uh, Europe that were completely neutral during the uh, war. And no, and no one uh, to this day. Um, it, it just makes me sick that people, people who are or just who um who or just uh, who, who had no thoughts of war were just was just there enjoying a cruise that they had paid for, and then here they were. They see the torpedo and bang, uh, they were gone. Um, um, I, I, I personally uh, um, think that there is enough blame to go around. Uh, Captain, um, Captain, uh, 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 Captain Schrieger had no, had, 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 uh, had thought that he, he was doing his country a favor. When in fact, he um, two years later he was ensuring that Americans would enter the war. Captain Wood, um, not Captain, but President Woodrow Wilson, um, a, 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 in spite of um, all the American lives that have been lost, was vehement about staying out of the war. As a matter of fact, that was the theme of his 1960 election to stay out of the war. So, so instead of giving him a firm warning, he did a little more than pat him on the back and say, don't do that again. Although, uh, for the most part, I thought Woodrow Wilson was a great president. In this one case, I think he was being very weak. He should, he should have given, he should have uh, told German flat out, if this continues, we're going to go to war. Um, by the way, the Americans did enter the war in 1917, but it wasn't exactly unanimous. There were many people who were uh, opposed to the war, but we did, we did end up entering it, and the battle cry avenged the Lusitania. Uh, by the way, I had mentioned that the uh, Lusitania had a sister ship called the uh, Maritania. Um, unlike her um, well-known sister ship, she did survive um, World War I as a uh, pastor vessel, and after, after the war was a successful um, pastor bomb vessel until 1935, um, when it was declared obsolete and was promptly scrapped. Although the Maritania was a great vessel, the Lusitania is the vessel that I, I like to think most of when it comes to World War I. This was a great, um, this was a great disaster. A, uh, uh, a, 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 shi a, a, a ship that everybody on b both sides admired. And here, and here it was uh, made into a sacrificial lamb. 
uh, to get uh, America into the war. 1,200 people died on this ship. People who lived in completely neutral countries have sensibly lost their lives in this disaster. And I just don't un uh, and I, I, I just don't understand why why these people had to be uh, had to be had to be slaughtered just to get an American of the war. Oh, uh, by the way, there is an interesting um, footnote to this disaster. A stoker um, by the name of Frank Towers has supposedly been on both the I mean, on three uh, famous shipwrecks, the uh, Titanic, the Lusitania, and the uh, Empress of Ireland. And to this day, historians cannot confirm whether he was on all, all three ships. In any event, he never got a job as a stoker. Stoker again. These were these people that uh, die in the disaster. We're, uh, we're not we're not meant to be pawns to be uh, to be used to promote people in the war. These were innocent people. These were people who had no thoughts of war, were, were only interested in a nice peaceful voyage to Liverpool. I again I give you the opportunity to uh, call in four two three nine oh two. Um, to give your um, to uh, give uh, give your opinion about what what you thought um, caused the disaster. Um, I mentioned explosives and coal dust. Um, there are ma um, many other possibilities. Explosives and coal dust are the only two that I'm aware of. I'm confident there have been many theories that have been advanced. Um, Right now, coal dust seems to be the most uh, likely. I mean, think about it. When you got explosions in a magazine, you how the heck can you ignite explosives and it not explode? That, uh, that doesn't make any sense. So my, 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 my belief is coal dust makes the most sense. I mean, the ship was towards the end of its voyage. So, um, so the coal had been pretty much all de at, uh, depleted, except for that thin layer of coal that be at the bottom, at the bottom of the ship. Um, so when that torpedo struck, the, um, that's what a lot of people believe, um, the um, cause that second explosion. It, so basically, um, uh, the, uh, as far as the split's concerned, I think it's pretty much 50-50. Captain Turner uh, knew perfectly well that he was putting his ship in great danger. I mean, it was just like Edward, ship, uh, Edward Smith with the Titanic. He thought, he thought the Lusitania could outrun any um, U-boat. He thought he was invincible. Boy, was, boy, was he proven wrong. I, Lusitania, like the Titanic, presents a very strong message. Never, never put your total faith in technology there's always a chance that something could go wrong. Um, he, I, here we are. A, sh a ship that was supposedly unsinkable. <laughs> We've heard that before, haven't we? Supposedly unsinkable, and yet one torpedo dooms the ship in 18 minutes. And I, as like anyone else, can't understand how one torpedo could sink a supposedly unsinkable ship. Uh, again, I give you an opportunity to call 4223902 if you have any questions about the Lusitania. 
or you have some theories um, of your own, or maybe not just the Lusitania. Maybe you'd like to talk about the uh, hip movie that everybody's talking about, or um, ships in uh, general. Um, well, in any event, with the uh, Lusit with the Lusitania, I, I think um, I I'm hesitant to say we learn our lesson. People are very soul learners when it, when it comes to history. It seems like we conquer the problem, let's go on, and then something goes wrong, you solve the problem, conquer it, then something else goes wrong. It happens at, all the time. People are so convinced that absolutely nothing is going to go wrong, and then presto, something is compl complete the opposite go, oh, goes on and a more recent example of that was the Challenger tragedy I mean people thought thought shuttles were safe one tiny expo uh, one explosion dashed the hopes of a safe sub a uh, safe uh, shuttle I mean people need to understand Technology is not infallible. Anytime we try to challenge the Almighty, something is inevitably going to go wrong. I mean, keep in mind, U-boats were not exactly a state of the art. I mean, half the time, torpedoes would, would get uh, jammed in the torpedo tube and wouldn't be able to do anything with them. And a lot of times, um, even they were able to clear the tube, they, um, the explosive mechanism in the torpedo wouldn't explode. So, he, and, and, I, and I really think um, to say Captain Trigger was lucky would be an understatement. Um, Given any other circumstances, the tor uh, the, tor uh, the uh, torpedo that sunk the Lusitania would have been a little more of a nuisance, and Lusitania would have been able to uh, sail on her merry way. But for some unknown reason, this torpedo was able to hit the ship just right, and down it went. One theory that's been proposed as far as the speed of the ship is that when the when the torpedo struck, the power was completely knocked out. So um, the, uh, watertight, the watertight doors were rendered inoperative, so they had no way of closing them. Although um, that theory, I have a little reservations. Uh, with uh, watertight compartments, when they're closed, they spill one to the other and one to the other. If the watertight doors hadn't closed, they would have pretty much gone down straight at a fairly slow rate. Um, so I believe the watertight doors were closed. Captain Turner had ordered the, um, uh, just the day before the disaster, had ordered all the uh, watertight doors to be closed. So, um, so, um, so I, we can pretty much dismiss that as a theory as far as what, what actually uh, doomed the ship. I uh, again give you an opportunity to call 422-3902 if you have any questions about the Lusitania or maybe you have some comments or maybe there's something something I, I, I should be covering that I haven't. Um, um, I, I view Captain Turner as an arrogant uh, person. Oh, by the way, he did make it um, he found a p uh, floating piano and managed to get on it. And he was part of the, uh, participating in the uh, British inquiry as far as what caused the disaster. Uh, he later died in the uh, 1930s. Um, forever vilified for his uh, l uh, inaction um, concerning uh, trying to keep the uh, Lusitania safe from harm. I mean, this guy had the attitude, oh, I've got nothing to worry about. Lusitania can outrun any, um, 
I can out outrun um, any U boat. Although, in a way, he had reason to believe, be cocky. U boats were only um, were only nine knots. Lusitania was twenty four. But somehow, somehow, the U boat was able to get get itself in the correct position, and then. If, uh, Captain, Captain Schrager was able to fire that torpedo, and down it went. Um, people just, um, it, it, it's, it's just, it's not also an example of how arrogant can be. It's, a, um, it's, a, it's pride is, is nice, but uh, there's too much, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. When you put pride car uh, carry too far, in my opinion, is stupidity. When you put too much faith in technology, inevitably something is going to go wrong. History has proven that. Um, a lot of things have I've proven that. Technology can be made better, but it can never, ever be made infallible. And, it, and it's just senseless how the Lusitania had, had to be so sensibly sacrificed just to make a point. And, and Winston Churchill was once quoted, quoted as saying, um, um, get in trouble and all, all more more trouble, the better still. Not only did he knew the Lusitania was going to be torpedoed, he was counting on it. I mean, this, for crying out loud, the Lusitania was British. His own country ship. And, I, and it just amazes me how he was be willing to sacrifice a ship of his own country just to make a point. And 1,200 people, 1,200 people died so senseless, uh, sense, uh, so senselessly. I mean, here, here they were. Uh, war couldn't be the furthest thing from their mind. They had no animosity to anybody. They were just they, they were just there to an like anyone else, to join a nice, peaceful cruise, um, a nice, peaceful voyage um, to um, Liverpool. And the lack of training on the part of the cr uh, crew only compounded the problem. I, mean, I thought we learned our lesson from the Titanic. I mean, with the Titanic, there were barely enough light bulbs for 1,200 people and no one was trained on their use. And the, with the Lusitania, adequate lifeboats were provided. But problem is, the ship was very poorly designed. Um, uh, when the ship um, took a heavy list to um, star starboard, the uh, port lifeboats were rendered useless. And there were a couple times when the, uh, when the lifeboats were launched, they would tip over, uh, uh, spilling um, people into the water. Um, I thought I'd take an opportunity to t uh, uh, recommend some literature. Uh, this is Exploring the Lusitania by Dr. Robert Valor, well-known oceanographer for, uh, um, for the Woods Home. He's well-known for uh, finding the um, Titanic, the loose, uh, not the loose name, but but the Bismarck, and also uh, sh uh, sh um, other uh, vessels, and he had uh, dived the Lusitania to find out what caused it. He, um, when when asked what, he, what 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 caused the disaster, he said in one very simple term, "Bad luck," <laughs> and I think that pretty much sums it. Um, an, another book I'd like to recommend um, is this one, 
I'm not even going to bother try, trying to discuss um, the title. But it, it gets into great detail as, as far as um, the, what, what construction was involved, how much work was in it. And you could spend hours on end try, trying to learn it all. And as far as videotapes are concerned, I'd like to also uh, recommend um, this book called, uh, this video called Windsor, uh, Cl Windsor McKay, a pioneer in um, animation. Um, this, um, this per you, uh, for those who've studied um, animation, I've seen some of his work, uh, like Gertie the Dinosaur and um, F Flip. These were the um, old um, um, ca uh, cartoons, the, the kind that didn't have any words to it. It was just pictures and pic uh, pictures and um, uh, uh, just dra uh, just drawings and music. But uh, L the Lusitania, he really sent the message home as far far as the impact the disaster had. Also, I'd like to recommend the um, last voyage of the uh, Lusitania, uh, last voyage of the Lusitania, based on Bob Ballard's um, book. Uh, th th this um, um, uh, video talks extensively about the Lusitania, the um, disaster, and this is something uh, has something unusual for a video. Um, at the end, they show how the video w was made including a part where um, where um, Jason was caught in a net and they had a hard time trying to get him loose. And the last one I recommend is, uh, this is a, a series of A&E videos called um, um, World War I. This talks about um, the Lusitania. This gets into great depth um, as far as U-boat activity, um, talks about the uh, mass grave. That's one thing I forgot to mention. When the, the bodies that were recovered, they were unceremonially uh, buried. They were just put in a grave, in, in, into a coffin, thrown in a grave, and then just threw dirt. No ceremony, no anything. They were, ju they were just buried. And, and, and that picture really sent home the message as far as the impact that the disaster um, had on people. Um, um, if you ever uh, see the book um, Exploring the Lusitania, I, I would encourage you to um, look at a drawing by, uh, a painting by Ken Marshall. He does all of Bob Ballard's artwork on um, when it when it comes to his books, and you get and you get a pretty uh, good idea of what the Lusitania looks like today, you can't even recognize it. All the funnels are gone. She's um, uh, um she uh, she's um it quite extensively. And when people died aboard the ship. For some reason, they exploded, exploded three of the ship's propellers loose and had one of them melted mel down for scrap. I mean, come on. A, this is a grave, and they're exploring a torpedo, uh, exploring a propeller loose for um, paying for the expedition. Um, I am a very strong believer in pretty much leaving the ship where it is. There are cases where I think artifacts should be brought up, but vast majority of the time, I like to see the ship left right where it is, untouched. The ship is mu much more, mu uh, much more enjoyable the way it is. I mean, that's the pr uh, problem with the uh, scuba divers. They they love souvenirs. When they go aboard the ship. They whip out a bag, stuff all they can in the bag, and then take off. And and that cheats the rest of us out of ever having to see that artifact. Oh, one 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 thing I did forget to cover 
um, uh, Bob Ballard had mentioned why he thought that John Lyon had made a mistake. Um, for those of you out there that are not scuba divers, there's a term called nitrogen nicosis. When, the pers when a person dies a certain feat, he loses his ability to make good decisions and tends to make mistakes easier. As a rule of thumb, for every 30 feet you dive, you feel the effects of one martini. So when you die to Lusitania, you're feeling the effects of 10 martinis. So here he is, I dive in the ship like some weirdo, expecting to find something. When he supposedly finds it, he says, look, I just found a ship. I found a hole that um, uh, sunk the ship. Well, uh, th thanks, to the invention, thanks to the invention of robots, we're able to term, ter determine that, that if it w was explosions, that's not what caused it. One of the big problems with exploring the vessel is it, it's the ship is heavily on its starboard side. This is the side where the torpedo struck. So we have no way of knowing if um, the, ex uh, the extent of that hole, all that supposedly sank it. And I, um, it, it would be nice if there was some way we could go inside the uh, Lusitania. Go, go in, um, si and learn once and for all whether there were munitions. I'm confident they'd be pretty soggy by now. But, but they, um, but I'm, I'm confident the evidence of war munitions to still be down there. As far as the possibility um, it was carrying more munitions, I'm almost willing to place money on it. And I emphasize almost because we don't know. Um, those of you, those that were alive then are too young to remember. And so we really, um, although I'm going to say it with 95% certainty, that it was carrying munitions. In any event, it was not carrying um, munitions in, uh, in such, uh, such a way. Um, uh, it, it was not what, ca what caused the uh, disaster. So we, we, we can pretty much um, uh, um, say uh, it was coal dust. I, I give you one last opportunity to make a uh, make a call, 422-3902 if you have any questions about the Lusitania or comments. Um, right now, I I really uh, to say it in a nutshell, this was senseless. These were innocent people. Innocent people who had absolutely nothing to do with the war whatsoever. And yet they had to be said, um, okay, uh, thanks a lot for watching my, sh uh, for watching Trying to See, and I look forward to you watching my next show. I'm on the uh, first Thursday of every month at 10 a.m. bought up. By the time um, it was over, there were only two uh, shipping lines left that were privately owned. The Cunard line just happened to be one of them. But the uh, British government uh, was afraid that the uh, Cunard line would follow suit. Uh, to keep this from happening, 
the um, British government offered a loan to, uh, to the, the Cunard line to build uh, two, uh, two ships on the condition they remain British for at least 20 years and that they be well built, built in such a way that they could be easily converted for war purposes. Thus, the Lusitania and the Maritania were born. Uh, the Maritania would fall suit a couple of years later and would be considerably faster than the uh, than Lucy, the uh, what Shep Brothers like to um, call her. One person described the Lusitania as the uh, most beautiful um, ship, um, beautiful, more beautiful than um, Solomon's Temple, and large enough to. Um, hold all of his, uh, his um, wives. If you have any questions about the Lusitania or any other ships um, that I've been discussing, the number is 422-3902. Um, when I do a show, I always uh, focus in on a particular ship, but you're free to talk about any ship you'd like to, whether it be the, um, the hit movie you've heard so much about, got the 11 Oscars, or um, the monitor or whatever. Well, anyway, the uh, Lusitania was um, w um, what, nine years after she was launched, she set sail from New York. Uh, by this time, World War I had already broken out, and the, uh, uh, the German uh, Navy was systematically sinking um, merchant vessels one by one. Masters and crew. About a week before um, the Lusitania, Lusitania set sail for a la for a last voyage, the, um, the Germans were sinking all kinds of merchant uh, merchant vessels. Uh, the U-boat was not exactly an ideal um, weapon. It was cramped. It's, the interior really smelled real bad. Um, it was, uh, space was at a premium, and its weapons were much better. When the thing um, would fire a torpedo, half the times the thing would misfire. But when, but when it was able to fire the torpedo, <laughs> it, it was deadly effective. The, uh, the person who invented the U-boat, I forgot his name, had intended it for the uh, American uh, vessels. For, for the American Navy, but they thought so um, uh, so inhuman and so um, so um, unwarlike. The person instead had to sell for the Germans, the Kaiser, then the uh, the uh, Chancellor of Germany, thought saw the potential of um, of U-boats, and and ordered them in great order. The U-20 uh, was one U-boat that would um, make history. Um, he was under orders to systematically um, sink U-boat, um, not U sink uh, merchant vessels one by one, without any regard to whether they were neutral or war. Well, on May 1st, 1915, the Lusitania set sail from New York. It was a grand occasion. When, whenever a ship sets sail from, New, um, from a port, it's always a grand event. People from all, all walks of life, whether rich or poor, would observe the awe of the, uh, of, of the, of the Lusitania. She was, she was a wonderful vessel, 785 feet long, and captained by William Turner, a veteran of 30 years for the Cunard line. And the, uh, the, uh, the wealthy passengers were something to look at. Among them were um, Alfred Val Vanderbilt, a, a well-known uh, millionaire tycoon, was, set sa was setting sail for England to attend a uh, meeting of the International um, Horse Breeders Association. And also the um, well known uh, theatrical producer Charles Froman, who introduced the play Peter Pan to American audiences. And also, um, the, uh, along with the uh, wealthy people, were um, 
were, were the people that weren't so um, wealthy. That America was a disappointment to them, and were, they were eager to return to their native land. But a couple weeks before they set sail, a warning appeared in the uh, New York Times. Any, um, any, uh, any uh, vessel holding the uh, British flag or its, um, or its allies would do so at their own risk. Uh, not many people had heard of the uh, warning, and those who had heard of the warning took it with only a grain of salt. Ha! Huh. Lusitania is the um, uh, uh, quickest uh, ve uh, vessel afloat. Uh, nothing will happen. Others were, weren't even war were warned. Well, by ironic twist, this warning had appeared next door to um, a, a Sally knows that the Lusitania was going to set sail May 1st. Hello and uh, welcome to Tries at Sea. I'm Mickey Hansen. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about the uh, Lusitania, uh, the grandest um, liner of her day, um, thrice winner of the uh, Blue Ribbon, the um, ribbon given to the world's fastest uh, ship. Her top speed was uh, 24 knots. Uh, she was launched uh, June 6, 19 1906. Uh, the first uh, three super liners built for the uh, Cunard line. Um, her story um, um, begins um, with the um, with um, J.P. Morgan, the well-known um, millionaire, um, millionaire tycoon, uh, buying up various uh, shipping lines, which would be named the International Merchant Marine. Um, one by one, um, uh, transit lines were being broken. Um, the strategy that was used by the Germans during both both World War One and World War Two was to literally starve the uh, British into sus submission by by hopeful, um, hopefully ch choking the um, needed supplies to the British. They could get them to surrender. The uh, uh, the British the um, the Brit the uh, uh, the British were uh, were um, fed up with the uh, 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 Germans um, sinking the uh, merchant vessels, so the um, so in violation of Geneva Convention at that time, they would use supposedly neutral vessels to, to transport. Um, uh, munitions, whether it be a commercial uh, vessel for the uh, British, or um, maybe they uh, they'd have a they'd have a British ship, but have it fly a neutral fl flag. The uh, the U.S. Um, was the um, was the most common um, flag that they would use. The um, one of the British's favorite techniques was to use what were known as Q-ships. These would be designed as mer merchant, ve um, merchant vessels. Um, the Germans would follow the protocol at that time. They would uh, surface, give them the time to um, abandon ship, 
and then they would go ahead and uh, either use de uh, deck guns and torpedo it. But after doing this about a year into the war, it, it became pretty risky, so the decision was made that any ship carrying the British flag would be, would be torpedoed without regard for safety for passengers.